Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. Today is the Tour of Flanders. It's a day late, but it was an exciting day of racing, so I didn't want to leave it off the Butterfly Effect, especially with Matthew Van Der Poel, Walt Van Aert, and of course the world champion Julian Alaphilippe duking it out at the Tour of Flanders. Alaphilippe's crash. It was epic. A lot of people were blaming the motorcycle. Some were bl blaming Walt Van Aert. Some were blaming Julian Alaphilippe. I'll break that down for you after we talk about these important five kilometers that were in the race from 40K to go to 35K to go. Sorry, I'm going to need my notes on this because in 5K, there was an immense amount of action happening and all of it affected how Julian Alaphilippe crashed and, of course, the winner and second place on this Tour of Flanders. So, you got to go back. You have to watch the video so I can break it down for you. I'm going to post pictures, of course, along with while I'm chatting and dissecting the race up for you. But you got to see the video from 40K to go to 35K to go. First, we're starting the Steinbeck Dreisberg and Wald Van Aert's driving it up the climb. Now, Wald Van Aert's already been tied up in one crash earlier in the race, but clearly his form and his legs are still fantastic. Keep that in mind. He still has good legs and he's still on the aggress aggressive attacks and trying to blow the race up when we're going up this climb with 40K to go. At 39K, over the top, it's Julian Alaphilippe that's driving it. He drives over the top, and as we come down to the bottom of the hill, you'll see a crazy little zigzag over a train crossing, and then followed by an immediate left and then an immediate right. When you watch the video, you'll see Walt Van Aert must have dropped his chain and had a small mechanical when he went across the train tracks. He has to pull out of the front group line. He's probably sitting fifth, sixth, top ten for sure when he pulls out left to where he has to fix something on his bike. I don't know what it is. We can only guess. Professional guess would tell you it's a drop chain. When that's happening to him, and this is crucial, this is a moment that's going to cost Walt Van Aert, possibly the Tour of Flanders, and certainly cost him some energy in the legs for that crucial sprint at the finish. While he's fixing his chain, again, it's Matthew Van Der Poel and Julian Alaphilippe on the tack. Those two are free of the group. By the time Walt Van Aert gets his chain back on, they make the next right. They're slightly leaving that tiny little town, village, whatever you want to call it. You'll see Wald Van Aert just in this next picture where he's got a little bit of a gap and he's on the tack because he knows he's missed the move. The drop chain before was crucial, folks, because this is a lot of energy now spent coming from this attack where he would have been right on those two guys' wheel on Julian Alaphilippe and Matthew Van Der Poel's wheel directly had he not dropped the chain. Instead, now he's chasing. Okay, they hit... That's all, that's all happening between 40 and 39K to go. Uh, at 38K to go is when Walt Van Aert starts closing the gap, and he's closing the gap on the Tannenberg climb. This is a steep cobblestone climb. He's not quite attached onto the back of these guys, so he's going faster than Julian Alaphilippe and Matthew Van Der Poel because he has to close the gap to them. When they come to the top, they close the gap, all right? Okay, he closes the gap. It's three guys together. They're rotating all three together. It looks smooth and great. We're going to see a battle of the three best riders in the world when it comes to the one-day races. And, of course, Julian Alaphilippe, he's a little hybrid. He does the st uh, stages. He does the one-day races. And now he's performing at the Tour of Flanders, his first, I believe, by the way. After that, it gets a little crucial because at 35K to go before the crash, so at 37 on the climb, when they come over the top, um, you'll see Matthew Van Der Poel goes to grab a water bottle. When he does, he has one hand on the bars, and he veers left, and he goes into Julian Alaphilippe, and there's almost another crash there. That is Julian Alaphilippe's third almost crash in this Tour of Flanders that we've been able to see on video. There could be 20 other ones, but from what I caught on video... This is Julian Alaphilippe's almost third crash so far in the Tour of Flanders. Now, what happens between 37 and 35K to go? You see the two de Kunic quick step riders, Eve Lamparts, back there, and they're trying to close the gap, okay? 
Now what's happening is their director at one point in time is radio into Julian Alaphilippe, hey, you, you got teammates in the group, you might have to sit on the front. Okay, maybe he's giving the green light to keep pulling, maybe not, it's hard to tell. At one point in time though, you see Julian Alaphilippe will just start to be sitting on the back before he crashes at 35 to get 35K to go. Now remember, there's always a delay between 37 and 35K, you're only talking two kilometers, okay? So two kilometers is a short amount of time to get information from the officials back to the race director, the race director back to his riders, Julian Alaphilippe and Eve Lamparts. That affects how, why the crash happened. I know it's, it's difficult to understand, but these last 5Ks are so chaotic, so much energy being spent, so much being talked about on the radio, and so many almost crashes that this is really affects what's happening with Julian Alaphilippe. Okay, the three come up to the motorcycle. You'll see Julian Alaphilippe get on his radio. He's been sitting on the back, probably because he was told from his director that he had teammates that are coming across. And now he's been told from his director that his teammates group's been caught and he's probably given Julian Alaphilippe the green light to start driving it again. So Julian Alaphilippe's probably getting on his radio, getting ready to say something like, I can't hear you, what's going on? What do you want me to do? Do I start working? Do I not work? What's happening? While he looks down like this, you have Walt Van Aert, who's already a little bit to the left of the motorcycle, but not quite clear. So he's gotta move just a tad bit more. Walt Van Aert moves, and I say this, this is an important fact, because some people blame Walt Van Aert who moved too aggressively and then possibly was trying to crash the riders behind him. It is a tactic used at the pro level field to just veer around a pothole, a lamp pole, a motorcycle, a parked car. If guys are sitting on that group, you will try to do that on purpose. I've tried it many times myself where I've had guys sitting on me and we're on a bumpy road and I'll wait to the very last minute to go around the pothole or I'll even bunny hop it hoping that the rider behind lands in the pothole, flats his tire, you don't want him to crash, but you want him off your wheel because he's not working. In this respect though, I don't see it from Wal Van Aert. I see it as very, very clean racing. It was exceptional racing. He was already had the motorcycle almost clear, so he just moves a little bit. The problem is the wind's probably coming left to right, so the other two riders are slightly blocked from the motorcycle and Walt Van Aert. When Walt Van Aert moves, all of a sudden it's more extreme for Matthew Van Der Poel to move left. And you gotta remember, Julian Alaphilippe is third wheel. The two guys in front of him are large guys. When you're Julian Alaphilippe's size, I know because we're about the same, you cannot see in front of these riders when you're riding in the gutter and those riders are that size. On top of that, you throw the chaos of the last 5K in. Now you throw the chaos of what's going into his radio and what he's hearing from his director. And now you throw the chaos of his head is down and tilted down. He has to turn his head down because he's talking in the microphone. If he doesn't turn his head down, the microphone won't pick it up. Every time you see the riders pinch and talk down, they're going into the microphone, no different than what I'm doing here. Okay. Now his head's down, the two riders in front are bigger, they're going very fast. While Van Aert moves a little, Matthew Van Der Poel moves a lot. Julian Alaphilippe straight into the back of the motorcycle. A Lot of people wanna blame the motorcycle driver. In no way whatsoever, no matter what the Kuna Quick Step director said, okay, it was not the motorcycle's fault. If you see, not only was it his, wasn't his fault, but he's not even the first motorcycle. There's one in front of him, then him, and so he cannot control the speed of what they're doing. They're going fast enough, in my professional opinion, more than fast enough that the riders had time to move out. It's not like they're parked on the turn. Also, Quick Step director said, complained first, what I read, complained that the motorcycle should have never even been on the inside. It wasn't that drastic of a turn. Julian Alaphilippe's, in my opinion, his crash is just multiple things coming together at once and making something happen that you wish didn't, okay? Total chaos for 5K, motorcycles dropping back right at that spot, but they're still going the right speed. They do it all the time. I've raced my whole career with motorcycles on the left side, the right side, in turns, whatever. It always exists, you have to be prepared for it. That turn was pretty easy. 
The two bigger riders in front of Julian Alaphilippe is going to block the view. His head being down and all that chaos, that's it. Game over for Julian Alaphilippe. His season's done. Nobody's fault at all. No one to blame. If I had to pick anyone at all, I'd just say it's Julian Alaphilippe's fault. But again, just multiple circumstances coming together, not his. Now the finish was great. Matthew Van Der Poel leads it from 1K to go all the way to under 200 meters to go. The whole time looking over his shoulder, always looking over, looking over the whole time. He knows like every sprinter, you can't jump before 200 meters to go. But when Walt Van Aert goes just under 200, he's got to punch it. He punches it. Walt Van Aert gets very close but cannot beat him in the wind. So you got to wonder that drop chain way back there at 37, 39K to go. That drop chain and then bridging across on the next climb had to take that little bit of snap where you only needed that much more and you can win this Tour of Flanders. It was a great race. I love when you watch this kind of chaos in a bike race. It makes for exceptional watching and it makes the enjoying that much better. That's my take on the butterfly effect. I'll bring up the jerseys that I got up here on the next one because we don't have time today. I hope you enjoyed the butterfly effect and I'll see you real soon.